Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'ma detail a notorious A Trey Gangster Crip. His name is Crazy D. Now the A Trey Gangster Crips are one of the most known Crip gangs in LA and across the country, having several chapters and branches all throughout the United States. A Trey Gangster's history runs deep, and they have been around since the 1970s. The A Trey Gangsters are from the west side of South Central and hold a huge chunk of territory, making them one of the biggest Crip gangs. The a trays hold so much turf, they divided their hood into different sides, like the South Side, Back West, Far West, Original West, and the North Side a Trey Gangsters, which was started by Munster Cody. Crazy D would come up in the middle of the wars that the a Trey Gangsters had. Prior to 1979, the a Trey's main rivals were Bloods, but by 1979, a deadly war would start between the Roman 60s and the a Trey Gangsters after a young Roman Siski lost his life. This will cause what has now been 44 years of war. This war caused many gangs to pick a side, and that's why you see today many Crip gangs in the gangster car with the a trays, and a lot of gangs in the neighborhood car with the Roman 60s. D would be born around 1963 or 64. He already was on a tray gangster by early teen, and around the mid-70s he would meet his best friend, Monster Cody. They would become road dogs, and basically do all their street activities together, making a name for themselves, and both had many close calls with death at an early age. Around the age of 13, Crazy D and Munster Cody would be beat by some bloods off a mistaken identity, leaving them almost dead. With them living such a fast life, they lost a lot of homies growing up, and several others being shot. As teens, they vowed revenge on anybody in the A-Trade gangsters way. Crazy D and Munster would come up with the idea to start making clicks in the A-Trades, and many other younger and older members liked the idea, and that's how several cliques of the A-Trades would start to form by other members. Much of the 70s and the 80s, Crazy D would do several stints in jail from various crimes, the worst being murder, which he later beat to charge. Once him and Monster were both free, they would continue to do hits on their enemies. But with Monster and Crazy D's name ringing so much, they would be pinned to crimes they didn't even do, like a robbery that got Monster four years and Crazy D five which they would do their time in YA. If you're not familiar with Youth Authority, it's like gladiator school for young men. Some of the most notorious gangsters and killers in California probably spend time in Youth Authority, also known as YA. After getting out, the crack era was booming in the mid 80s and Crazy D took a full advantage of this, basically becoming a bona fide hustler, making money and supplying his hood and looking out for his homies. But on May 9th, 1988, everything would change and ruin Crazy D's life. On May 9th, 1988, it was said that Crazy D and other a trade gangsters were involved in a drug deal gone wrong when they were sold flour instead of dope. That night, they went out looking for revenge. On being able to find a drug dealer that played them, they got to drop on what type of car his sister drove and they went out looking for her. They spotted the same exact car with two girls in it. Only thing, it turned out to be the wrong car but they didn't know and killed both girls that were inside that car. It was even said that same day, they kidnapped the woman who was supposed to be involved in that drug deal. LA, May 9th, 1988. Jamie Finney went for a ride to the store with next door neighbor Latanya Nikki Stover. Nikki was eager to show off her new red car. What the girls didn't know is that the young men were members of the Crips. Earlier in the day, they'd been swindled. Five of the A-Trade gangsters, including Crazy D, would later be arrested. Monster Cody would later visit Crazy D while he was in county waiting to be convicted. Crazy D would tell Monster he knew his life was over, but he was in his gangster life forever. And that's all he knew. He said he was going to keep it going, even behind the walls. At trial, Crazy D showed no remorse, and was even said to be smiling and smirking the whole time. It was even said that Crazy D was making cold remarks to the victim's families. The last thing Crazy D said was, Gangsterism continues. Crazy D is now 59 years old and at Calipatria State Prison doing life without the possibility of parole. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.